chromatophores are organs that are present in skin, which contain pigment sacs that become visible when muscles pull open the skin to expand it. In the center of chromatophores, there is an elastic sac full of pigment, like a little balloon, and the color can be black, brown, orange, red, or yellow. And if, if you stretch this balloon, the color will gather in one spot, stretching out the surface and making the color appear brighter. Uh, below the chromatophores within the skin, there's iridophores. They're tiny crystals that are made up of stacks of thin protein plates and they function as reflectors that can either absorb color or pick to reflect it. Then we have lysophores that are below the iridophores and they contain orb-like proteins that scatter light equally. Like the chameleon in the picture, they use chromatophores to change color to warn any animals that may threaten them or to hide from them. Chromatophores, iridophores, and lysophores are all located within the dermal layer. A question I have for everyone is why do you think humans have different skin colors? Take a couple seconds to think about that. Okay, so people have different skin colors because melanocytes produce different amounts of melanin. And the less melanin you have, the lighter your skin, while the more melanin you have, the darker your skin. Cephalopods are marine creatures such as squid, octopus, or cuttlefish. They usually have a big head and a set of arms or tentacles. Octopus have a diet of crabs, clam, fish, and a fun fact is, they have nine brains, three hearts, and blue blood. Octopuses can blend in with their surroundings, changing color, and even the texture of their skin to match rock or coral. They do this by controlling the size of projections on their skin that are called papillae. The squid has a diet of fish, crustaceans, and can be cannibalistic which means they might eat, eat each other. Uh, an example of a squid is the giant squid, which has a brain that is donut shaped, three hearts, eight arms, and two tentacles. On the left, you'll see a video of a Caribbean reef squid, and it uses chromatophores to communicate with one another, such as the male Caribbean reef squid, which turns red to attract females and white to repel other males, as you will see in the video. Hi, my name is Austin, and I'll be talking about cuttlefish. Cuttlefish are cephalopods, and they are also invertebrates, meaning they lack a spine. Their natural predators are shark and dolphins, as well as other cuttlefish. Um, they use their unique capabilities as chromatophores to evade predators and catch prey. They have eight tentacles, with two of them being specialized for catching prey. They are venomous, and a unique fact is females die after mating because they only mate once in their life, and after that, they go into isolation where it usually leads to death. A unique fact about chromatomorphs, chromatophores is that they're able to change the color of their skin through the contraction of their muscles because that pigment comes from an organ-like sac, which is the chromatophore. And that, through contraction, they are able to change colors. And not just that, but they are able to make up their own colors, such as certain pigments make pink when you combine the two. It is triggered through the release. I mean, it can be triggered by the nervous system or by hormones. So either for mating purposes or for flight or flight response, such as a predator coming by and he has to, you know, camouflage. Here we have the pygmy seahorse. So when scientists first started seeing seahorses, they originally believed that there were just multiple colors of seahorses. So one day scientists got together and they got a male and female orange seahorse and they put them in a tank and bred them 
their offspring called seahorse fry also came out orange so they incorporated a new coral color which was purple and to their surprise all the seahorses changed colors and if you can see the little bone like structures on the outside of the seahorse's skin those are called turbicles they're basically like calcified bone and it helps the seahorse camouflage in the sea coral also called a Gungorian sea fan. Here in this picture we have a pygmy seahorse and it's the size of a paper clip. A unique thing about seahorses is they don't have stomachs which makes them eat 30 to 50 times a day. Um, most regular seahorses eat shrimp and small crustaceans but for this one since it is a pygmy seahorse they are believed to eat plankton. Um, a question for the group is which parents give birth, the mother or the father? Well, if you guessed right, it was the, the father. Unlike other animals in the animal kingdom, um, seahorses have their fathers, are the ones that get pregnant. And um, which kind of also changes the way the mating system goes, like the roles of the parents. It's usually the fathers or males that have to fight for females well for seahorses it's the opposite the male I mean the females are the ones that compete against other females for males so now talking about chameleons they have two thick layers of these iridophore cells um, and so their color change actually relies on structural changes of their upper cell layer so these cells contain nanocrystals that can alter how light is reflected off the cells. So these two structural changes are a relaxed state and an excited state. So in this relaxed state, the skin cells are super close together, they're bunched, so they reflect short wavelengths of light, and these include blue and green. And we know that if something reflects light, then it's, that's the color that we appear to see it as. Uh, the second state is an excited state, so this is when the cells now distance themselves from one another, and so they can reflect longer wavelengths of light that include yellow, orange, and red. So this would occur if they become agitated or threatened, kind of like a warning color to their surrounding. So people believe that chameleons use camouflage um, on purpose to blend in with their environment. However, the reasons why they change color have nothing to do with their background or setting, it only depends on the mood or temperature. So the reason why we might see chameleons that blend in with their setting then is due to natural selection because their changing of color due to temperature or mood will allow them to survive better if they happen to match their surroundings. Um, so thus chameleons in forests may have developed more colors to their palette because of their environment that they survive there better, whereas those in the desert might only have slight variations of browns and greens. The next species that I will talk about are frogs. So not all frogs can change color, but there are a handful of them that can, and they do contain the chromatophores. Um, so these include the gray tree frog, the African clawed frog, the spring peeper, the green tree frog, and the white tree frog. So the way that these frogs can change color is slightly different and relies more on their surroundings, um, such as temperature, brightness, humidity, along with their emotions and moods similar to excitement or anxiety. So for example, let's take a look at an African frog. So they are normally green, but they can actually turn white in the heat of the day to reflect the heat and keep themselves cool. So that's an example of temperature. Um, also male frogs can change color to attract a female frog and this can be temporary or permanent color changes um, for the rest of the frog's life. Um, so this is a longer morphological time span of how they change color, and this mechanism actually involves changes in the density of the cells of the chromatophores, whereas the color changes um, mentioned above, dealing with surroundings, temperature, brightness, humidity, along with um, uh, emotions and mood, is more of a physiological occurrence that can be quicker and more reversible time span. <laughs> 